All right. Well, here we go. Hey, everyone. Gonna play a little Zaya today. Want to bust this one out. Uh, well, first of all, if you're joining, thanks for coming by the channel. Um, doing a little Zaya today. Wanted to play because Iridia just started its Kickstarter this morning, maybe about eight or nine o'clock this morning, but uh, same publisher, Far Off Games. So it got me wanting to play Zaya again, get out the, the pre-painted miniatures and explore the universe, the galaxy. So let's bust this thing out and have some fun. So let's get to all my setup stuff, make sure I don't miss anything. So I don't need Okay. So first let's bust out the map tiles. Let's see, put the economy over here. So there's near. Whoops. There we go. We need it with the, the station on there. So I need that one. I'm gonna grab all the other tiles. Uh, let's see if I need a good space for this box. Cause there's a lot to this game. There's some space to the side here. Okay. Uh, all right. Have my point marker. That can work there. Still in camera. All right, so I have near place a face up in the center play area, shuffle the sector tiles, which there's a whole bunch. Part of why I like the game, lots of variety. So I believe I play. Okay. So solar rule setup. I have near. Then reveal additional sectors until I have at least two with spawn points. But also have a total of at least four sectors. So let's see. We have Neo Vostok, no spawn point. Outpost 338, no spawn point. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, there's a spawn point here. Because spawn point, you're looking for those numbers right there. So that's one spawn point. Lost sectors, absolutely nothing around. And Loth, which will be my second spawn point. So that's two spawn points at least four sectors total 
And with Loath, that means we're going to start with the Outlaw already. When we're playing solo, the uh, the Outlaw, the Merchant, and the Enforcer, which is pretty much the, the police officer, the police in space, uh, they come out when certain plans come out. So it'll be inter interesting to see which AI card I draw. I have that. If Kemplar 2 and or Loth aren't already revealed, so this one is, but I do have to find Kemplar 2 because that's the one where the Enforcer will come out. Uh, let's see. Okay, so there's Kemplar 2. I'm going to add five random sectors. One. Two, three, four, five, and then shuffle this guy in, and it's going to get added to the top of the whole stack. that organized pop that in my back of my game box here uh, let's see let's play with the let's say purple today All right, I have my solo round summary card NPC stats side A and B my player turns, Zaya, mission and powers, and then the behavior cards for scoundrel, merchant, and enforcer. Oh, I have a little solo set up here to help me out. And then these are for the campaign, which I still haven't done. Like, I play this plenty of times solo. And I think I try to start the campaign maybe one or two times, but. It's just a, it's a tough start depending on which uh, which card you get. Uh, I like to just play and try to do it all on my own, I guess, without a, a specific objective. So let's see. Scoundrel card, merchant, enforcer, cell sword. I'm not going to use a soul sword as an NPC. I'll just have it as a possible ship that I can get. And I already have the correct titles and events taken out because I really play this solo. Get my monies. So. Okay, so I almost forgot how much space there is in this game. Whoops, sorry about that. Let's see, market cubes. Shuffle the relics and expiration tokens and place them face down somewhere.
see all the expiration tokens are here. Just randomly get those. Shuffle mission cards, event cards, all these titles. I'm not going to shuffle too crazy just because it's been a while since I played, so it's not like there's a certain order that I remember these were in. events and this giant stack of mission cards Good enough. Put those somewhat organized back in the box, make it easy to grab. Okay, so all the cards are shuffled up. Place cargo cubes, ice damage markers. I uh, have all those. Oh. Uh, So when I got this game a long time ago, I made my own insert. Some of the pieces are 3D printed, which I did, and then some are a foam core insert. Uh, but it definitely helps just having everything easy to grab. And I just bust this out, put it on the table somewhere, and off I go. Uh, so I have all my outfits here. Credits close by. Got my dice in here. So I start with four thousand credits. One reason uh, I'm excited for Iridia is I know in Zaya, you're, you get your money's worth. I feel like I do. Uh, it was standard to have metal coins included. There wasn't, uh, it wasn't where you had to buy the game, you get your cardboard, and then you spend an extra 30, 40, sometimes almost like the price of a game just to get the metal coins for that game. These are just already part of it. And also all the painted ships. I know not everybody's a fan, but I don't feel like painting all day, and especially when you start adding all these miniatures. The fact that Aridia is going to be all painted up too with as many minis as you're getting is pretty awesome for me. But, all right, so I get my 4,000. I have my little, well, I guess, yeah, how to win card. Put that to the side. Let's see, I'm going to keep my NPC stat card here. Ah, just somewhere to the side. I just need to be able to grab it real quick. I right, definitely need the solo round summary. Don't need the solo setup card. Let's see. Oh, place the kilns NPC card. Oh, actually, never mind. 
So I used to have an NPC card for the kiln, which uh, is this big old flying fortress there. But I actually cut this off the card and just like super glued it right onto a uh, near star. So because really this never moves, I don't have like some random card that you're supposed to fly to the kiln and then place your mini wherever you put the card at. But instead, I just put it right on here on which space I want to go to. So that is there. Let's see. I have my NPC cards. So I put the victory points at 20 and then we'll just go at it and see uh, how long I can keep playing, see if I make it there. We have our economy board. Let me get all my stuff out of my little baggie here. Oh, I forgot. I already put like the 2000 or 4000 in my starting bag. Make it easy on myself. Alright, so with the economy board, we're going to roll the D6 and then just see how much each space gets. So I'll start with the top left here. I believe that's is it Terra. Is there a, something that shows me all that stuff? See if I can remember what all the cubes are. I know the white ones are ember, that's part of the expansion. Okay, so for Terra, four. The max it can have is six. Can go all the way down to zero. Uh, for hollow, three. See S, I uh, think it's spice. We'll get two. That's the orange cubes. See P, this light blue one. Ooh, what a or P. Plasma, maybe. Let's talk about spice. We got spice. will find you well, if I don't know where it talks about cargo cubes oh yeah yep he is plasma that one's getting five kind of crazy these like clear cubes because there's some that are solid looking and some that are kind of see-through I don't know if it'll pick it up but there's like cracks in it and maybe the solid ones look the same inside too but it actually looks kind of kind of cool all right then the last one the C for purple is cyber now I'm starting with four so Got a pretty healthy market here. Nothing really low is spice. All right, so the economy board is filled and now it looks like it's time to pick my ship. I have to grab the level one stack. Uh, I do have everything 
for Zaya. So every ship I have has uh, two powers that I have to choose between. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single thing. I'm just going to go through some. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'll just show you guys which one I pick. And I'll start with the beginner one. Make it easy. I'm going to go with the. Go with the puddle jumper with his uh, energy scoop ability. And what that does is as an action, I can roll a d20. And depending on what I roll, I'll just get energy back. So this lets me fly around in space a little bit longer than normal before I have to go on a planet and resupply, recharge up. So those will go back in the box. Lower that just a tad. Okay, so hey, puddle jumper. Ah, puddle jumper is the first card on here, so maybe that was the last one I played. So much stuff in Zaya. Gotta find places to put it everywhere, but it's part of the reason why I love it. See Rikishi, I can put you off up here somewhere. Don't need you until I need you. Hmm. All right, so my arm markers will go on my ship. One on energy, an extra one for whatever else. Let's see, level one little puddle jumper. There you go. See, and you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, the paint job's not the greatest thing, but I mean, for me, it's better than what I was going to do, which was nothing. Well, I know I need the scoundrel since Loth is already out, so I can grab him. Hey, what's up, Ravnos? Thanks for the raid, party of one. Still setting up here. Uh, but excited to play Zaya in honor of a uh, Ridi on Kickstarter now. Okay. Scoundrel starts with his little outlaw token. I'll put my player token on the puddle jumper. Let's see, any more setup? I have that. Okay, so I know I need at least one token to mark there. Victory points. So I'm going to spawn all the NPCs and I'm, I'm going to put them over here to the side. And as they come out, they'll just kind of jump into their spots. So Enforcer, Merchant, Scoundrel. Scoundrel is already out, or he will be out, but uh, each one has up to four behaviors. So I'll just roll for him and set that up too. So for the, well, I'll just do it as they come out. How about that? For the Scoundrel, 
I'm going to roll a, I don't have a D4, huh? So I have a D8. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I rolled a six. So scoundrel is going to be a bully. It says, uh, the scoundrel that wants to pick on you. Target if tier. So the, I'll be his target if I'm tier one or two. He, if I can reach three, then he'll leave me alone. And his behavior, he's going to move to me. If in range, attack. He, the scoundrel is a top row. He attacks with blaster, so that means he's, he's going to have to be adjacent to me. Uh, if no damage is dealt, he attacks again. <laughs> so... Yay. So I kind of set that up that way. Scoundrel's going to be a big bully. Alright, so yeah, I'll just reveal them as they come out and they'll go left to right. Uh, can't really see it because it's underneath my portrait here. Alright, where are you? I spawn my tier one ship. Oh, I, <laughs> I just realized I completely uh, forgot to set up my map however I want. So just in the beginning, I don't have to match uh, symbols in solo mode. I'm, you can, I still match uh, the symbol lines just to not getting like weird shape with these but uh i don't have to match the exact symbols just in the beginning here for my own setup so i could put loath far away from me since i know he's going to be trying to target me and i could just keep him trapped over here Right, so let's see if I put Lost Sector there, I just make it kind of hard for him to get to me. Look like that. So the scoundrel's gonna start way over here, and then let's see. I so I have to start on well, I could start by Loth, but I'd rather start at this outpost. Ooh, 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 this is a really, uh, this can be a really huge money making opportunity. So, part of the expansion is these ice asteroids, and you can go. Oh, actually, there's no uh, mining spot for Ember. I think it's uh, some of the other tiles. This would have been really nice to have next to the kiln because I could get Ember, go to the kiln, and sell it for 2,000 each cube, but. You can actually do that with this one. Well, let me do that. I'm just gonna have this big straight line here. And that. This will be interesting. Okay, so I will be starting way out here at the very opposite end because I just don't feel like getting attacked right when the game starts. This cool ice comet here. Let's see if it pops up there. Oh, that looks pretty trippy. This one will be trying to kill me if I go in its path. But that goes right here on Neil Vostok. The kiln starts there. Let's see. So this other behavior card, I'll just toss that to the side somewhere. All right, still have my money, my impulse. 
If I ever get a bounty, I get my own token. I get the red D20 out. That'll be for when the NPCs roll for fame. But I do need to outfit my ship. So I'll just already put my 4,000 away because I know I'm going to spend it all. There's no point in holding on to that. Uh, so I definitely need an engine. So all these outfits range from 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, depending on which level you buy. So level one, two, and three. The one thousands on all of them, if you sell them back, you get the full money for them. And then... The other ones, you, where is it? You get half uh, rounded up. So if you sell a medium, you get you only get 1,000 back. And then if you sell a large, you get 2,000 back. So how do I want to play this? Puddle jumper. How about I get a... 2000 engine does that fit somewhere yep with a gts so the 2000 engine lets me roll a d8 pop that there so that's 2000 and then for a thousand i have this little gts that's attached to my engine That'll let me add plus two to my roll, but I still max out at whatever my engine does. So I'll never get above eight. But at least it'll help me on those bad rolls when I roll a one. At least I can still move three spaces. And then, do I want to take a shield? Do I want to take uh, armor, plating? So I only have a thousand left, so let me get one of these uh, level one shields. So let's me roll a d6 up to two times. I can fit that there. So I still have two spaces up front on my ship that I can put cargo on. I need to put explore markers on the board. So one over here on Loth, one in this asteroid field. Or the uh, ice asteroid field, and then one in the asteroid field next to me. Okay. So I can move that to the side. And I think we're ready to start. So let me get my little solo round summary here, make sure I do everything. So player's turn, I uh, do my actions using my arm markers here to move around and do other little actions. Uh, so this actually says what I can do on my player turns. And then after I go, there's a system expansion which the game puts out a tile to expand the universe and then the NPCs will go which in this case will be the scoundrel trying to find me and kill me and then the NPCs will gain fame points I'll roll a d20 for them they'll get some bonuses and depending on what they roll then yeah it'll just let me know how many they get so for my turn my options are Moving around, attacking, which isn't going to happen, exploring. If I go on these mission points, I can draw mission cards and deal with cargo cubes if I have any to buy and sell. And if I want to do any other abilities. So, first, so I'm somewhere where I can explore two spots and 
exploring or scanning is one action each, but all you have to do is use um, one energy per sector. So first I'll start with up here. So I'll use one energy, draw a tile, and I get lower stratus. So here we can harvest some plasma as well as look at mission cards and uh, get expiration markers out. So now I have to line it up. There's a little T symbol here and you can see on these how there's different shapes on these little lines. So I have to match that up. So I have to match it up with that T symbol there. So I'll spin that around. That will go right there. Now, whenever I cross into this, this is a nebula, every time I enter it, I have to roll a d20. And if I roll 10 or lower, I lose energy. And whatever the number was, that's how much I lose. 11 or higher, I'm safe. But let me put a expiration marker there. And so now that's set up. So now for another energy, explore another tile that is going to go here. In this area so I got the grinder so now here's where I can do the quarry action I actually try to get ember that I can take back to the kiln for 2,000 a pop so that could be really nice to speed up my gameplay try to level up so I have to match up the square symbol there so that means another ice asteroid going right here expiration tokens out okay so now I'm gonna use one of my R markers to move and I'm rolling a d8 and adding plus two to this so seven eight because I max out so I'm gonna move I have to use this arm one, two, and then I'm going to pause. So I still have six movement. Because, and the reason why I'm pausing is be, I'm going to grab some mission cards off that spot. So what I do is uh, I'm trying to think if it's said. Uh, so in the regular rules, you'll draw mission cards and then you can, they want you to wait at the very end when you're playing multiplayer because it can drag down the game. But I think in solo rules, they, they kind of tell you like, well, since you're playing solo, the only downtime, I mean, you're playing the whole time, so there is no downtime. But now it says each time you take the draw missions action and solo play, you may look at the missions immediately and keep the appropriate number based on your available mission slots. Instead of waiting until your turn is over multiplayer, you may also choose to wait until the end if you prefer. So I'll just take a look at them and see if there's any that I want to deal with. So. There's two colors, like blue is usually good. You're not gonna do anything illegal. And then orange are the illegal ones where you're stealing, you're trying to blow something up, who knows. But really I'm just checking. I think I'm gonna lean towards the blue side, especially with the, uh, man, do I wanna get into a battle with that guy already? But uh, I'm looking at their locations to see if they're even out. But like this research, it says fly to Azur, which I don't see, and deliver to Kemplar 2. Now that, won't, that might not be too bad because I know Kemplar 2 is in that top stack that we shuffled in the beginning. So eventually that will come out. It's just a matter of where's Azur. But for now, I can at least just choose to pick one because I don't have a mission computer, so I can only hold uh, one mission at the moment. So I'll do that. Discard the other ones. And 
and then continue my movement. So I had six movement, which is why I put the little reminder guy here. Um, I want to try to get some of these exploration tokens. I'm going to go one, two, three. So I'm flying in here. So I use three more movement. So I have three left. And since I went into an asteroid, I have to roll a d20 to see if I take damage or if I roll 11 or higher, then I'm safe. So usually everything in this game, as far as if you're about to take damage from something on the board, you're grabbing your d20, you're looking for those high numbers, 10 and lower, it's going to affect you in some way. So, Oh, just like that. Because I rolled a 9, which is pretty bad. So I'm going to use two of my markers to use my shield. And I roll a d6 twice. And try to block as many of this as I can. So three plus five. So that's eight. So I really only took one damage. So my shields help me out a lot. And I will. Uh, I guess I can put. I'll put a damage on my shield. So now the next time I roll my shield, I'm getting minus one to it. Um. But now to continue on to my turn, I got this expiration marker. So we'll see what we got. Energy. Uh, you just get full energy. I only had, I only used two so far. So I'll just pop it right back up to 10. And I'll keep that token because if I collect two, I immediately turn it in and I can either get a fame point or I believe uh, 2,000 credits. Uh, let's see, yep, 2,000, so. Keep that close by. And then I can, I still have three more movement. So I will go I just go one, two, three. Uh, I start coming down this way, open all this stuff up. I can go one, two, three. And then I still have one arm marker I can use. So I'll move again, roll my D8, seven plus eight. Or plus two, but max out at eight. I will go if I if I cross that ice asteroid line, it activates, and then I have to roll a d6, and if it lands on me, then I immediately blow up, which I don't want in the very beginning of the game. And I'm just going to go move two spaces and stop there. So I'm forfeiting the rest of my movement. And I'm going to use one energy marker to scan. And we get the Tigris Gate. So there's multiple gates in this game, but this one is busted up. Uh, if you use it, you can use it, but it's going to shoot you out. You're going to roll a d20. And it's going to shoot you out in a random place in the universe. But let's see. I'm trying to match up the circle. So that will go here. And so I'm going to put a little damage marker on here just as a reminder. Because whoever is the first person to use the Tigris Gate gets a fame point. And that includes NPCs. Because they'll try to use gates to try to get to me if they can. So I don't have any more arm markers. I can't move anymore. So I'm kind of stuck there. So now there's no business phase. So I'm doing my action phase. Business phase is 
if I stopped on a planet or on the kiln. So now I go into status phase. If I had any ice damage, I would uh, spread the freeze. If I had uh, fame cards, I would claim them. I draw titles or events, but that only happens whoever hits a level one first. There's certain numbers where you either draw an event or a title. Refresh slash demand. Demand what? That's kind of weird. Uh... Why does it say it like that? Oh, here we go. Where are we? So I'm looking for the end of round stuff. Oh, okay, and then I forgot too. I have my little uh, energy scoop. So it doesn't hurt for me to try to use it. If anything, in this game, one way to get victory points is once per round, I think. If you roll a 20... It's kind of like you did such an awesome job that, you know, everybody heard about it, so you're getting more and more famous. So let me do my energy scoop. I rolled a six, which I get two energy, but I was only down one. Okay, so then I'll go into, like, the status phase and do all my stuff, but. Oh, man, I completely forgot, too. I have my uh, impulse on my ship, which is four. So I'm rewinding again, <laughs> so I can flip that and go one, two. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go three, four. All right, so I'm back in the action phase because I didn't realize I had all this stuff. Um, and then I'll use one energy to scan out here. That's what happens when it's been a while to play. Oh, man, this is actually going to be... This could be pretty awesome. So this is a Dead World, part of the expansion. We're going to get some relics on here. And relics, the only place to turn them in is at the kiln, which is right next to where I just explored. So I need to line up the little T here. The Ruins of Drummond. So it's kind of funny because this game, how the board comes out, <laughs> kind of dictates like what path you might take. I mean, you can pick a path and just be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to kill everything I see. But if you use the board to your advantage then you can make a lot of money and a lot of points a lot faster. So this has four face down relics on it. Maybe next turn I can go there and just try to start delivering them to the kiln. On failures on that one, I get ice damage, but at least with ice damage, as long as I don't feel myself a hundred percent, I can go to the kiln and it'll just melt away. Okay, so now I'm done. So I'll refresh everything, my impulse marker. This would have been exhausted, but that comes back. Um, my arm markers, they're all disarmed. So I just spend an energy for each one to arm them up. So one, two, three, four. So I'm down to five energy. But I have the energy scoop ability, so just try to bring that back up next turn. Uh, what else do we have? So that's the end of mine. So now, okay, for the solo round summary, end of player's turn is the system expanse. So it says choose an unexplored location with the most adjacent sectors. Pick an edge first, so that way I can match up the symbol. And then... Uh, then reveal the sector so I think it's going to be right here because there's one two three edges and we're and I will pick let's go with this one from the dead planet it's an arrow so there's Kemplar 2 
where we can buy spice and sell hollow. But I'm gonna need another planet to see if I can do trades. Although I can mine for spice up here if I want to go that route, but let me uh, set this up. I need to spin that around there. Put an expiration token inside that planet. And actually the enforcer is going to get added to the list of NPCs. So now I need to get his behavior cards. Which, did I not leave them out? Oh, okay, I see him. Never mind. So I need to figure out uh, what his behavior is going to be. So let me do this a little bit more blindly. Uh, so first I'm just going to pick out of these two cards. So I'll roll a D8. So one through four, five through eight. So I rolled a six, so it would be this card. Take out the other one. And then when I flip it over, there's a top and a bottom one. So same thing, one through four, five through eight. A three, so it'll be the top one. So this enforcer is diligent. An enforcer trying to do the job. So the target is gonna be the outlaw with the most bounty. Oh, and I completely forgot the the scoundrel starts with a two thousand bounty. Whoever kills him is able to get. It. But so he's actually going to be targeting the the outlaw. Then the outlaw's trying to kill me because he's a bully. The force is trying to kill the scoundrel because that's his job. So. I get the uh, the enforcer's ship goes right there on number two from Kepler two. So whenever he acts, he targets. He's going to move, and he attacks with missiles, so he can attack at range. And then he's going to repeat it again. So he's going to move if he's in range, attack. And even if he attacks or not, he's going to move again to get closer. Or you know, if he's in range, he doesn't have to. But yeah, he's going to make it hard for the uh, the scoundrel. But that doesn't help me, though, because if he does kill him and he takes his money, that money is used to add to his rolls. So that was all just from the system expand. So now NPC's turn. So follow ship behaviors. If a ship is destroyed by NPCs, they're going to get the fame points. Uh, if NPC destroyed by player, I have the option to draw a new behavior. That can be kind of fun because it's like a new enforcer came out. Uh, so anyways, let's go from left to right. The scoundrel is a bully. I'm going to be his target as long as I'm tier one or two. So for his stat card, his move is, what is it, six? And he tries to get right next to me so he can hit me with his blaster. So he's going to fly around. One, two, three, four, five, six. He can't attack. And if he doesn't, then he doesn't move again. So he just moves once. Now the enforcer. Let me flip his card over. Actually, do I need a, I have like the stat card. Okay. Uh, the enforcer, he's going to move six spaces. And I believe missiles is within, was it five or six? So he has to be at least two spaces away. He can't be adjacent. And there, yeah, the range is two to six while having line of sight. Okay. So he's going to move one, two, three, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. So he only, he only had to move three spaces to get him in range. Now, 
I guess I can get all the red dice for uh, what I do with them for the NPCs here. Because they're gonna be fighting. What I need a D8. I already have the D20 out for them. D12 and there's that D6. So the force is going to fire off one D12 missile at him. And let's see how hard he hits him. A six. Pop that there. And the uh, scoundrel, he does have a chance to use his shield, which is a one D6. So he could potentially block it off. And I'll use it with my purple one. A four. So... He only does two points of regular physical damage, so I'll put that on the Scoundrel. And right now, the NPCs, I'm using the A side. I won't switch to B until I hit 10 points with somebody, but it's going to take 10 points of damage to kill him. So we got him just a little bit, a couple of nicks. All right. So that was NPC turn. So now end of round, NPCs gain fame points. So I'm gonna roll their D20. If there were any cargo cubes on the board from me jettisoning them or, I don't know, somehow I just didn't pick them up. Or if there's any money out, they would get plus two to their die roll for each. If they're behind on fame points, they would get plus two for each fame point behind. And then if the merchant comes out, which he will he will come out when uh one out of his one more out of his five planets shows up so kemplar 2 is one of them once the second one is out then he can start doing his uh trading route but for now he's hasn't been revealed yet so i'm not adding anything to this and i rolled a seven which is one fame point so that's going to trigger a event card but I don't do uh, do I do events like right away I think I might in solo sorry I know I'm hitting the rule books every now and then but it's been a it's been a minute uh, let's see The NPCs can cause new titles and events to be revealed if they're in the lead. Reveal the appropriate cards immediately. If the NPCs reach the selected number of fame points for victory, you lose. Okay, so we get to see a event right away. So we got economic crash. While this card is in play, <laughs> we were so confident. I, I like the little flavor text. While this card is in play, all cubes on the economy board are removed and placed into the supply. All right, the market crashed. Everything is removed. Maybe I do need to go mine for spice and sell it on Kepler 2, but right now I'm going to try to use the opportunity of these relics. Now everything is in demand, so each spot on the economy board will get a thousand credits because if you if you give it at least one cube then you're helping the economy and they give you a little bonus because it was needed so bad uh, this card leaves play after removing all cubes from the economy board which is immediately so that event is done can't buy any any uh, <laughs> well anything alright so now back to my turn um, yeah I think I'm just going to go at it and try to send relics to the kiln before the the scoundrel starts hitting me hard so so it's three spaces away, so I can actually just use my impulse of four to move. 
Oh, and then I just realized I didn't even do this last turn, but I just forget about it. So I'm starting my space on a mission point so I can draw three cards. And then as I'm going to that excavate, I cross over another, another mission point and I can draw three more cards. So I'm getting six total. So I'm going to grab a stack of missions and keep them close by. But so I think I'm just gonna look at the end to see which missions. Like I'll just load up on a bunch of them and then um, I will discard this because I don't think I can draw missions if I have at least uh, if my computer is full. So delete you know that mission that way I can check out some more. So now as, so to, to do this excavate action, I don't need to use anything. I just simply start rolling and say I'm doing it as an action and hopefully I get a relic because I only have space for one. But first I am going to use my energy scoop puddle jumper, just kind of refill. Maybe I'll hit a 20 and get a point. I got a 17, which gives me three energy. So one, two, three. Okay, so now I need that same roll to excavate. Try to get a relic. So I don't get all this ice damage. Nine. That is no bueno. So I'm going to use my two shields. And because I have the one damage on there, I'm going to get a minus one on each roll, so I'm trying to block nine here. So four plus two, so that's six. So I get three ice damage. Then I just have, I just have to decide where they go. I just pop them on the shield. So I'll put these markers on the disarm area. Let's see. I'll put another one on this GTS. So I'm going to try again, see if I can get a relic. High number, please. 11. Woo. So I got one, and I put it face down in my, in my ship. I can't find out what it is until it's essentially like I found a big old crate out there and on this dead world, and I take it to the kiln so that way they can brush it off and open it up and let me know what's inside. So now... I have two arm markers left with only movements that I can do. So I'm going to use one on my engine. My GTS is damaged. So whatever I roll my D8, that's what I get. But I just need enough to go to the kiln. So four. So I'm going to move. Uh, oh, I never put a expiration token here. So first I'll go one. I grab this token and flip it over. And I got plus five immediate movement, but not like I need it. Now, like, I'm gonna turn these two in though for two thousand credits. Start building up a little, little money. But I, yeah, with that plus five and my initial four, I have plenty of movement to get on the kiln. So I fly into the kiln. I pass by the mission spot. Well, actually, I'll just land on the mission spot because that's fine. Now, the way the kiln works is every time uh, on dockings, the kiln is going to orbit around near. So I have to roll a d6 to see how many spaces it moves. So four. One, two, three, four. A little bit closer to the, the scoundrel. Not a fan of that, but... So I do draw three more mission cards. I'm on a mission point. And I will do the excavate action, which is revealing what this token is. So I can either get a fame point or I can get 2,000 credits and what is uh, the piercer, which is worth 1,000. So really, 
I think I might take the money and the piercer, but and then just end up selling the piercer to get a thousand out of it. So I'm netting three thousand. So I'm sitting on five thousand. Now what's nice is how much are level two ships? Five thousand. That is. I'm gonna stay on the kiln so I can do that. So, and it'll knock off any damage. My brand new ship won't, the damage won't carry over. Uh, so I'm just gonna end my turn. Well, actually, I'm just gonna do one move action. So I rolled a six because I'm going to fly off the kiln and back on, so that's two actions, but I'm trying to move the kiln around and kind of get away from the scoundrel a little bit, so it moves three, so one, two, three, and then I'll do it again for another two movement, so I'm down to two, but since I'm docking the kiln again, one, uh, and then for my last two movement, I'll just do it one more time, get me away from that scoundrel as much as I can, so five movement. Three, four, five. I'll take that. Gotta kind of game the game a little bit, but these NPCs are tough, so you gotta do something. Um, yeah, that energy scoop was used, but so I'm done. So since I'm on the kiln, I I can actually do a business phase. So energy just recharges right away for for free. Uh, my ice melts away since I'm not in the middle of space anymore. Uh, I can buy and sell outfits. So I'll sell this piercer. Oh, and then I realized I already took that thousand. So I'll sell that piercer for a thousand and get it. And I can buy a new ship for five thousand. So now I get to look at the level twos, which are these green ones. So let me, oh man, because if I can jump up to level three really fast, then the the scoundrel just won't even mess with me. Because he's a bully, he won't, he only wants to pick on weaker people, which in this case are level one and twos. But it's just a matter of which power I think I might want. Uh, let me see, I can dodge damage, I can do some attacks. Autopilot now. I can spend movement to repair damage. That's actually pretty awesome. And it's a as a minor action. Ooh. That's that's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. So for my level two ship, I'm picking the Krembler. It's green, so that's why it's uh, all level two cards are green, so you're seeing through a little bit. But uh, yeah, that kind of works. So kinetic weave, as a I'll just read it as a minor action. I can spend two movement to repair one damage. And this card. I just keep using a movement to repair myself. Whereas the energy scoop, it, it even says in the bottom corner, after you use you replace it face down. Uh, that way you can just keep using energy scoop multiple times. But now I uh, have a power to get energy back for free. And then I have my new power to just kind of heal myself up for easy movement. So I get a new ship. All this stuff's coming off. This level one's going away, and I'm going to get the Krembler. So let's see what the differences are in size. There we go. So my 
all the spaces inside, the hold goes from 10 to 14. The energy stays the same at 10, but luckily with the energy scoop, it's not that big of a deal. And then my impulse goes down by one. So my little free movement every round goes from four to three. And then I get to change out my shit to, ah, that guy. Once again, sweet little painted miniatures. So move my marker over. I'm the only player, so it's not like I have to do this, but I still do it. Oh, that puddle jumper goes away. Put these off to the side. And now with my new ship, just have to put everything back. So since I have a new ship, the damage that was on it will go away. Now I have a lot more space to play with here. So I can do something like that. Maybe get another GTS and fill this spot up. But all right, let me put all my, I get to arm up for free since I'm still on the planet. My energy's all full. Okay, and then just put that marker there. Uh, so when I buy a new ship, Everybody heard about it, and I get one fame point. All right, so now into the status phase. So no freezing, no clipping fame, no drawing titles, nothing to refresh, and no armor markers. All right, so now to the expanse. So there's one area with three sides over here. So that's where the new tile is going to go. Uh, we will pick the circle from the lost sector. And we get Zaya. Yeah, big old piece of sun. Where, <laughs> I mean, it really, it kind of doesn't matter, but line that circle up. Uh, NPC's turn. So scoundrel's gonna move six towards me. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the enforcer. Ooh, I totally forgot that last time the enforcer does this thing twice. So let me do another attack for the first round. Because yeah, I forgot I completely forgot that he repeated it. So the enforcer attacks with a D12. So he hit with three, then the scoundrel has a shield with a d6 of one, so he should have two more damage. So he's at four out of his ten. So now for this round, he's gonna move and he just needs to move one space away because he can't shoot his missiles up close like that. So he's gonna do this twice. Uh, you know, I just rolled this twice and then he'll roll his shields twice and we'll just see what the total is. So seven plus five, so that's 12. Let's see how much he blocks. Six and four. Wow, so he only, uh, so he blocked 10 of it. <laughs> so like, somehow the scoundrels trying to survive here. So that was the NPC turn and now End of round, they're not getting any bonuses to their d20 roll. And they rolled a 20. Yay! So they got two points, which is going to reveal a title card. And we get Answer the Call. Can you still hear it? To claim this title, be the first player to reach the final hex of Farron's Call and escape the sector alive in one turn. But Currently, Farron's Call is not out, so I'll just pop that somewhere on the board to remind me. And then I have all these missions I can look at. So, of course, and again, it just depends on what's out. Uh, let's see. There's shuttles, smugglers, 
I really don't want to get on this Enforcer's bad side because if he starts attacking me twice, that's way worse than the the Scoundrel who just attacked me once. So I think I'm going to stay good guy because the Diligent Enforcer is scaring me. Private Eye, Neil Vostok, which is this ice asteroid here. I would have to fly to the uh, mission spot there and then deliver intel to Lunari, which currently isn't out, but that's still a possibility. Uh, I can try to get cargo, I can transport. All right, so then I'm just gonna keep the private eye just in case it comes out. And then it'll be the beginning of another round. So, excuse me guys, give me one moment. I'll be right back. So starting a new round and I have a lot more space to excavate. I hate that that, oh man, cause if I can get like a lot of money real quick and just jump up to level three, then that guy will leave me alone. So I'm just gonna try to push that. So, and where the kiln is positioned, I can use my impulse to move these three spaces to go one, two, three, and then just start going to town on. So I could potentially hold <laughs> all three of these if I just get really, really lucky. So, all right, first, try on the first one. A six, don't like that. So let me, Oh man, because there's going to be ice damage, so let me use one of my arm markers, or my shields. And I rolled a four, so I do. I take two ice damage. So I'm going to put one on my GTS, and the other one on my engine. So let's try again, see if I can get a relic. Five. Alright, try to... Use my shield on that one too. I, mean, I didn't get the Enviro shields. I forgot about those. And I rolled a five. So now I'm going to keep trying. And yeah. Hopefully I don't kill myself doing this. But if I can get them, it'll be worth it. But now I can't do anything to block the damage. So 14. So there's one. Let's try it again. I rolled a one, so that's just one ice damage. Not too bad. Try it again. A two, that's two ice damage. So put on my shield since I already used those. Alright, let's try to get another relic. Come on. 13, there we go. Now can I get the third one? Nine! Ooh, okay. Uh, I think I just killed myself. Yep, because... So my total hold... 
Oh my god, I could have. I totally forgot about this. Um. So I'm going to take the 9 damage, but because I just forgot about my new ability, I'm going to cheat a little bit and do it anyways. So I'm going to use, I should have used my movement to kind of heal this stuff up. So I roll a d8, roll a 7, so I can spend 2 movement to repair 1 damage. So that's 3 total of these. So now when I take my nine, I have to figure this out. Can I keep the two relics that I just got? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm gonna lose one. So I'll put that one down here. Yep. All right. So I'll lose this relic. I'm not even gonna look at it. Just get rid of it. Pop these there. So that leaves me. That leaves me with one engine space, and it's gonna be a minus three. So I need to try, try to get to the kiln and roll high enough. Oh my god, I rolled a one, and the minimum you can move is one, so I'll just fly one over. So I'm not going to blow up, I'm going to drop the relic that I picked up when the ice spreads. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Alright, well... Guess I can use my uh, puddle jumper ability because why not? A seven, but I'm maxed out, so that's fine. Hmm. Well. So. All right, so I'm done with my player turn or my action phase. No business phase, so the freeze. Oh man, I am about to die. So this relic goes away. That's what happens in this game when you push your luck. When it doesn't work out for you, then it'll bite you in the butt hard. Uh, so the damage, the free spreads, no fame to claim, no more titles or events. Uh, do these arm markers for one, two, three, four. Get my impulse back. And NPC turn. So this guy's gonna go one, two, three, four. And he's gonna roll a D12 on me. Which. Yeah, it really doesn't matter because he just rolls anything and he rolled a nine, but all I need was one more damage. So I blow up. I need to remove all my ice markers. All my ice damage. And I know when I come back, since I'm a level 2 ship, I'll start with 2 damage on myself. But for now, um, he destroyed a level 2 ship. So... He should get two points. So I let him cross an event, which, whoops, will be signs of life. We heard garbled radio pleas for help. So while signs of life is in play, uh, it says, uh, while signs of life aren't found, players that end their action phase on a dead world mission point, which right now we have one, 
uh, may roll a d20. 1 through 15, nothing happens. 16 through 20, iron 2, fame points, and find signs of life. And then business phases can now be conducted on that mission point. Mark this by placing an event token here. So that's definitely going to try to do that. I'm right next to it. Okay, so NPC. Okay, so now the uh, enforcer goes. He's one, two, three, four. So he's already. Okay, so I need to take my ship off the board. The scoundrel's still in range of the enforcer, so he's just going to attack twice. So it is a d12. I'm just gonna roll it twice. So nine plus one, so ten total. Uh, scoundrel gets a block for six plus one, so seven. So he did three damage. So where's he at right now? He's at. Nine out of his ten damage. So that was NPC. End of round. They're rolling their D20 and they're not adding anything to it. And they roll a seven, which is just one point. So a title card comes out. And we have Traveler. Thread the short and long paths. By doing it, you can get a two fame points. Uh, claim this title will be the first player to, in one turn, start by using the Tigris Gate, then fly to Expedia Gate, then to Delta's Gate, and then finally back to Tigris Gate. Then once you do that, along with getting the two points, uh, once this game has an action, you may immediately move from anywhere on the board to a gate space. So that won't be, won't be, can't do that one until way later. But let's see. So that's the end of NPC round. So now for me to come back, I'm a level two ship, so I know I'm starting with two damage. So I'll just pop those. Uh, like. Pop it, put those like that. And then I have to see where I spawn. So I have to roll a d20. A two. Are there any twos? Yeah, actually there's Dead World right next to me. So I will go there. Well. Let's see if I can get that one relic. I'm going to go one, two, three. Roll my d20 to try to get it, so I did. Pop that right there. Uh, use one arm marker for movement. Four, five, six, because my GTS. I could try to do the signs of life. Well, I have to end my action phase on there, so I'm gonna go on the kiln. And the kiln will move four. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna excavate. And I found a fame point or 2,000 credits and uh, armor plating. So I bet, yeah, I'm gonna take the money and the armor plating because I'm trying to build up to get that level three ship. So that will go away. Get myself an armor plating, which I will add way over here. Now I'm just take a lot more damage. Um, okay, let me use my engine again. Get away from the scoundrel. Four plus my two, so six. 
Let's go three spaces on top of this lost sector over here. And I'm going to scan twice. So one scan. Oh, I guess when I blew up, I should have been full. So, all right. So one scan. I'll check on my left one here. And I get Burning Horse, a nebula. We can harvest some hollow here. And I'm looking for the little Y symbol. So that gets an expiration marker there. And then another scan on the right side there. And we find the brink with little planet Tig there, the smallest planet in the uh, galaxy here. So where's the line? Right there. That also gets an expiration token. Okay. So still no second like regular planet for the merchant to come out yet. I still have two R markers, but it's just a matter of where to go. All right, well, let me just uh, roll and see how much I can even move. One plus my two, so three total. Uh, let's go one, two, three, and use another energy to scan. And we find Blench, another ice asteroid where we can get some member. Not, not too far away from the kiln, but man, that ice damage is going to be rough. So I'm scanning from where the circle is at, which would go like so. Expiration token in the ice asteroid. The third ice asteroid is out now. So I have no more movement. Uh, let me use my puddle jumper. I rolled an eight, which is going to give me two energy back. And I think that'll be it. So uh, status phase. I refresh my markers here. I use three markers, so I have to use three energy to rearm them. Hmm. All right. Uh, so it's my turn. System expanse. So the one with the most edges is going to be right here next to the kiln. And we get Expedior Gate. Oh, and I forgot. So I'll go with the line where the kiln's at. Pop that down there. So I'll put a little damage marker on there as a reminder. Because it says the first player to use the gates earns a fame point. But... It's not going to work until a second gate comes out. And then whoever used the first gets a fame point. Okay, so that was the expanse. NPC turn. So the bully's still coming after me, moving six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Enforcer turn. He's one damage away from killing this guy, so let's see. Oh, he rolls a d12. On the first shot of five, and then second shot of eight. I doubt his a two d six is gonna block this. So four, six, so ten. Yeah, he'll need one more damage to get through. So the enforcer killed the scoundrel. So 
the scoundrel comes on the board and he'll respawn when it's his turn next. So the scoundrel is a level one, so that'll, that'll give them one fame point, which will trigger an event. And the event is infestation. Chewing on the power cables. While the while this card is in play, the player who drew this card is now the host. So I'm assuming the enforcer is because uh, he's the one that kind of triggered it. Um, place this card next to their ship mat. So space rats, whenever the host rolls a one, they must take one unblockable damage and then contaminate once per turn. Whenever the host is adjacent to another ship, even if it's not their turn, immediately give this card to that ship. They are now the host and it doesn't leave play until the host is is destroyed so this enforcer enforcer has an infestation on his ship uh that's npc turn so now to see so i think uh, how's it work when the enforcer kills the scoundrel he takes the 2000 bounty and adds it for the roll uh where are we Oh, we have great ship, blah, blah, sign it, expense. Hmm. So round in, immediately after all NPCs have gone, but before resolving events, you must do the following. Remove any cubes from the mat, roll a d20. Yeah, at plus two for each 1,000 NPCs collected this turn, either from bounty due to destroying ships or events. So since he gets 2,000, yeah, I'm pretty sure isn't that bounty is a... But is it a thousand or two thousand? I put two thousand. It'd be nicer if it was less. Oh, well, maybe I need to see about the it's on the NPCs. Nope, scoundrel spawns with 2,000 bounty. Okay, 2,000 it is. So we're gonna turn that in, add four to their roll. So 18, so they're getting 22, which is three points. That's gonna trigger another title and another event. So the title is Daredevil, Nerves of Steel and a Steady Hand. To claim this, you get a fame point that says, without using shields, fly through three asteroid spaces in one turn and survive. But then if you do it, it says you no longer have to roll against yourself when entering asteroid spaces. So that could be pretty crazy. You can hide in asteroids to stay away from the NPCs. And then the event card, Galactic Jubilee. While this card is in play, as it would say, all debts are forgiven. While this card is in play, players may travel to the kiln and receive credits one time as an action according to their current position on the fame track. Uh, first place gets a thousand, second place gets two thousand, and so on. Uh, place a damage on this card at the end of each round because the card will go away either once all players have gotten their credits or there's three damage on the card, so three rounds max. 
but that'll only be me. So if I go to the kill, I'll get two thousand credits for for free. But uh, so now back to regular turn. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to have this. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna throw away this mission. I think when I blew up, I was supposed to lose it. Um, so I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna use my impulse and use. Ah, uh, hold on. I use my movement, roll a d8, so seven, eight total. I use four of that to take off this damage. So I still have four movement. I'm gonna go one, two, right into this nebula. And let me see if I take energy damage. Six, so I do. So it puts me down to zero. And I'll move three to grab this exploration token, which will be a plasma. Ooh, but no one wants to buy it. And I still have one more movement, so I'll go back there. Well, I'll just go out here. And the D6 will... Ah, no. I'll just go back there, play it safe. Uh, I need to do my energy scoop because I'm down to zero energy here 11 so that gives me two energy all right let's activate my engines again and move all these red die out of my way i'm getting confused all right roll my d8 three four five so I'll go one Two, three, four, five. Let's move again. Three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, use my impulse of three. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to the kiln so I can re get all my energy back. So I'll just go one, two, go into the kiln. The kiln will move four spaces. So one, two, three, four. And I'm on a mission spot. So I'll draw three. In my turn there. So I get everything back 100%. See, I have 2,000, so I'm on, in the business phase. What do I want to get? Better shields? Because I can sell my level 1 back for 1,000. And get a, the 2,000. And I still have 1,000 left over. So with the other 1,000, I can get... One of these Enviro shields. Now it's just a matter of how I add this. So if I go, that'll work. So the Enviro shield, if I ever take environment damage, I can use that one spot to get my max uh, shield on it instead of having to roll. Okay. Any good? Ooh, I have a shuttle. Burning horse to Tigris Gate, and right now, so you get paid by sectors. So it'd be 
one, two, three, four sectors. So this card will pay three thousand. So definitely take that. I might just do that. We'll see where the uh, the scoundrel shows up. So that's it for me. So expanse phase. It's gonna be up top. I'm gonna to pick this one here and the, the line. Then we get Smuggler's Den. You can buy any hex and or any uh cube. I can't remember if Yeah, I think you, they still come off the market. But I know if you sell to low it, it those won't go on the market. I think that's how that works. So an expiration token up here. And all right, that's set up. Uh, NPC turn. So I'm gonna roll a D20. Let's see where the scoundrel pops out at. 18, which is Smuggler's Den. And so now he's still trying to target me, but he's going to have to fly through the asteroid. So let's move him one. And, oh, I just realized. Uh, so the NPCs hit 10, which is the halfway point. So I'm going to change the NPC stats to uh, from side A to side B. So now they move more, they attack harder, they're harder to kill. They can block more. The way it's going so far with me only having one fame point, probably shouldn't do that, but I don't know. I just play it however, whatever happens, happens. But so he actually moves nine now, but he's going to have to deal with that asteroid. So he does the same thing. Roll a 20 D 20 for him. 17. So he's safe. So he still has eight more movement trying to get to me. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's right next to me, but I'm inside the kiln, so his blasters won't work that way. He, he'd have to get into the kiln if he had one more movement. All right, so the enforcer still wants to target him. I need to put his uh, the scoundrel's 2,000 bounty back on him because he's back. So the enforcer will go one, two, three, four. Yeah, that'll work. Um, and he will attack twice. So now the enforcer attacks even harder with. He rolls a D8 and a D20. Holy cow. And then the scoundrel shields are now a D8. So the enforcer is going to be the red die. The scoundrel is using my shield with the purple. Uh, yeah, we'll just see how much you can block and he has to do this twice. <laughs> oh, that's gross. Uh, so he attacks with, oops, 15, 18, but then minus two is 16. So the scoundrel's health is 15. <laughs> so he just completely demolished him. And kill the scoundrel again. That does hurt me because he's going to get his bounty and he gets another point for killing that level one. That is rough. Uh, so, yeah, end of round. He's going to turn in that 2000, but I'll just throw it back on the scoundrel. So he's adding plus four to their uh, fame roll. So three, so he's at seven, which I think is just one point. And we get another fame, or another title, which is Ice Rock Jockey. It's just a dirty snowball. Enter a comet's path and have a comet end its movement on a space adjacent to your ship. If I, if I do that, I'll get a fame point, and then once I claim it, on your turn, when you roll for comet movement, you may alter the roll by plus or minus one. So 
That way, I'll never have a comet just land on me and blow me up. Uh, back to my turn. So, Scoundrel's gone. Do I want to try to do the shuttle? So, Burning Horse. All right, I need to, like, get points because I'm doing pretty horrible. So let me use a arm marker for movement. So seven, so eight, coming out of the kiln. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so I need to try to do some stuff along the way. So if I go one, two, three, so I still have five movement left. I went into the comet path, so I have to see where he moves. And he's moving two. I was trying to see if I can do the ice rock jockey, but he didn't get close enough. And then for another movement, which will put me at four, I'll go into this ice asteroid and roll a d20, see if I take ice damage. 16, I'm safe, but I do take the expiration token, which is a cyber cube. Still nowhere to sell it, but I can turn those two in for 2,000. Because if I can get to 8,000, I can get my level 3 ship and not worry about the scoundrel anymore. But by that time, I'm sure the NPCs are going to have their 20 points. Um, okay. So I still have 4 movement. Just trying to get to Tigris, Tigris Gate. So 1, 2, 3 to go on it. And then the 4th movement to actually use it. So using it, I'll remove that. Because that was my reminder. Yeah. Now I'm an asteroid worm. I got a whopping two points. So I have to roll a d20 to see where the gate spits me out. 14. Is 14 out? Yes, it is. Right here. Okay, I'm going to use one energy to scan right here. And we find the Delta's gate. Hey, that'll be an easy point. So I'm looking for the square. Put that marker just cause. So now I have two gates working. So whoever uses the gates first gets a, a point. Uh, so let's use another arm marker for my engine. Give it a little roll. So seven, man, this thing is, are these weighted on seven? But uh, with my GTS, I'm at eight. So I'll move one, two, three. So that gives me a point. So now I'm mostly harmless. That's my title. So I was three out of my eight. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Try to see if I can get to burning horse here. Uh, so I need to move again. One plus my two, so I'll go one, two, three. Just went into the nebula and I have to roll a d20 to see if I take energy damage. Ooh, I don't, but I did roll a 20. So I think once per round, if you ever roll a 20, then you get fame point for luck. So you roll a natural 20, you get one fame point, max once per turn. So now I'm a rubbish runner. So I'm safe. I keep all my energy. I'm going to use my impulse to move three. And then I can start this shuttle because it starts at Burning Horse. And then I'm trying to take him to the Tigris Gate, which is 
those four sectors away and get that uh, 3,000. And it'll give me a, a fame point too. But I don't have any more movement. Uh, let me do my energy scoop just because. Hey, I rolled another 20. But I already got my fame point. But I get my energy back. I use three arm markers. So I have to use three energy. Get my impulse back. Um, let's see. Okay, so system expanse. So I can move it up just a hair. This one's going to be kind of off the board, but I'll pretty much just start forcing it to fill these out afterwards because I don't feel like shifting the whole map. I got Vortex 86, another Nebula. Let's see, I'll, mark, I'll do a circle here. For an expiration token right there. And now it's an NPC turn, so let's see where the scoundrel pops up. A 13, which is right next to me. Well, that's not good. So he's going to move, and they don't have to worry about... Um, Well, I don't think they have to worry about nebula borders, but. Let's see, 16. Do they worry about any borders? All right, NPC details, uh, movement. They will avoid asteroid fields, debris fields. Well, before you couldn't avoid it because that gate wasn't open. Um, okay. Uh, nebulae do not affect NPCs. I get. Yeah, so nebulas don't affect NPCs. They can use gates. They cannot scan or blind jump. And they'll try to avoid asteroid debris. And then as a last resort, resort planetary shields. Uh, okay. So nebulas don't affect them. So he is attacking me with, now that he's on his B side, two D12 blasters. I'm just going to roll mine and his. All right, so let me see how much damage he did. Uh, I think I only have to declare how many dice or spots I'm using after I see his number. Combat, page eight and nine. So he declares attack. He'll spend his arm markers if it was like a player. And then I'll, oh, okay, and then I declare defense. I spend arm markers on mine too. And then we all roll. Add it up. The defenders. If I spent arm markers on shield outfits, may immediately rearm those to spend it for each energy. So he's rolling 2d12. I'm just activating all three to block everything I can. So I'll be rolling 3d8. So his attack is 12 total. He rolled a 10 and a 2. And so I have two D8s here, and I'll roll one more. So I rolled five total, plus another five, so that's 10. So I did two damage to me. 
which I can put on my armor plating like so. Oh, where am I? Okay, so then the enforcer is going to go. So one, two, three. Well, how, how many does this need? One, two, three, four, five, six. So he just needs to move like one space. Uh, and here's where his crazy, crazy attack that he does twice comes along. Like, that's nuts. So he's really rolling. 2d20s plus 2d8. While the scoundrel is only rolling like 2d8. So here's all the enforcers. Seventeen plus one plus three plus sixteen. So is that twenty thirty-seven? And even if he rolls uh, his 2d8 perfectly, well, there's an 8 and a 6, so they're like 14. But uh, yeah, he still killed them. <laughs> so he takes his money, scoundrels off the board. Uh, he They get a point, which causes an event to come out. Derelict Hulk. Take a random unpurchased level three. So I'll just randomly pull one while I'm reading this card. Um, and spawn it. This ship cannot be purchased. Well, I dropped that one, so I'll just pick it. So it's. The uh, constant sorrow. Okay, so I'm going to spawn this ship. I rolled a 14. So it's going to go over here. Uh, this ship cannot be purchased normally and is now the Hulk. You can tow it when you make a take a move action. For each space you move, you may also move the Hulk one space, as long as the Hulk is adjacent to your ship. But essentially, so if you tow the Hulk into the kiln, you get it for free. But I can tell you right now, that's not going to happen. There's a way too much movement to get the Hulk all the way to the kiln over here. And the, you're, you're using two movement for one space because you're towing him. So it's a, it's a slow process. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now back to my turn. Or no, no, no. Uh, that was the NPC turn. So again, with that 2,000 bounty, they're adding plus four to their roll. Eight. So 12 total, that's just one faint point. So they're at 14 while I'm at four. Uh, so now back to my turn. Now, nah, I, like, I must have skipped some, oh no, 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 I forgot to arm those three markers. So I get them back. Let's try to move and go to Tigris Gate. So four, six total. One, two, three, four, five, six. Move again. Roll the six, so eight total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, use another arm marker to move. So I rolled five, but I just need to roll two. So I made it to the Tigger's Gate to deliver these passengers. There was one, two, three, four sectors away, so I get three thousand credits. 
and a fame point. So now I'm at five. All right, so I finally did one mission. Only took almost the whole game. Uh, let me do my puddle jumper ability. Roll the 16. So what does that give me? Three energy. I'm going to use my impulse to go to this dead world uh, for the signs of life because if I end my action phase there, then I can roll a d20 and if I roll high enough, get some more points and trigger this. So I need to roll a 16 or higher. That's a 17, awesome. So now I'm at seven. Uh, and I take a little, This event token there just to show that oh, I guess I can draw uh, six more missions because I hit those two spots but now I did signs of life so now I can do business phases there oh man I wonder if I can sell enough to get a level eight or a level three ship We'll see, but uh, okay, so yeah, now business phase. So I have 5,000, I'd have to make 3,000 more. So if I sell the Enviro Shield, my GTS, and my level two shield, because I only get a thousand back. That would give me 3,000. All right, so there's my 8,000. So let me put these outfits back. I know buying a ship will give me a point, so I'm at eight. And now I get to check out level threes. Hmm, do I wanna Ooh, maybe I can go uh, harvest and do some things to get money. But what can I even do? So, okay, I can sell hollow here, and which I can get over here at Burning Horse. And then there's all the ember too. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go with the Manchester ship. Which is... This guy right here. So what his power is for three energy cost, uh, I can do uh, the hard bargaining ability because uh, I can drive up the price of my cargo. So as an action, spend three energy and roll a d20. And then depending on what I roll, I'll get some nice bonuses per the cubes that I sell. And it lasts for the duration of the turn. So if I go around different places and sell multiple places, So let me, so I'm moving up so I don't need that damage anymore. And then I'll 
transfer all this stuff to my new ship. So the crumbler is out and Manchester is in. So my hold goes up from 14 to 16 and my energy goes from 10 to 14, but my impulse goes down again. So now my impulse is only two, even less moving. Still crazy that the merchant has a main appearance yet. Like all the world tiles are at the bottom there. But let me uh, put all my markers back on. Since I'm on So, uh, so all I have is an engine and armor plating. So I need to make some money. Get all this stuff back. Let's see, put these cubes wherever. Okay. Um, so that's just my business phase. NP or system expanse turn. So there's one space up here with the circle. We have Neo Damascus. Damascus. So you can buy plasma or sell spice, which I can mine for spice. So it's starting to give me some options here. Put an exploration token out there. Uh, that does activate the merchant coming out now. So we'll start over there. And then on his turn, well, actually, I need to see how he is going to be acting now that he's been revealed. So his behaviors, so same thing. He has two cards. I'll roll the D8. So low, high, roll the seven, so this card, and then low, high, a one, so the top one. So investor, a merchant that likes credits. So, so it says his target, the cell space on next trade route planet, which right now he's starting at Neo Damascus. So he's got a little card here that keeps track of his five planets that he goes to, which is pretty cool. But when it's his turn, he's going to move to target. And since we're on the B side, he moves 15. Um, if arrived, earn D6 times 1,000. So I just roll. If at least 5,000... Aboard, spend 5,000 for plus one fame point for NPCs. Jeez. It's just a matter of how unlucky I am on those uh, money rolls for him. Uh, okay, so that was, uh, so now it's the NPC turn. So we need to see where the scoundrel comes out at. A 13. So I know 14 is right here. Oh, no, there's a 13. And then he's going to try to... No, he, I'm not his target anymore because I'm tier 3. So he now he's just going to sit there, which kind of sucks because the Enforcer is going to keep blowing him up every round. So yeah, Enforcer's turn, just same thing. 2d20 and was it 2d8 missiles on him. And he showed up right next to him. See, 7, 7, so 14, 15, 16, so 21. So 21 minus, uh, so 8. Uh, so let's see, minus 7. So he got 13 damage out of his uh, possible 15. Five, 
Okay. Well, at least I didn't get them this round. They landed those points. And then the uh, merchant. Uh, let's see. So he wants to move. So his target says sell space on next trade plan and route. So there's only two of them. So I'll put his arm marker on Kemplar 2. That's where his target's going to be until he gets there. Uh, and he can move 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And he's trying to get to the the cell space. Woo! So he was one away. <laughs> so that was nice too. That I got delayed. Uh, so at least they're far enough away that you know, he doesn't just automatically get there. Okay. Where so that was all the NPCs. So now end of round, uh, just rolling a D twenty without any bonuses. And they roll a fourteen, which is one point. So they're at fifteen, which triggers a title coming out. Reckless to boldly go. Uh, to claim this title, be the first player to. Perform three blind jumps in one turn. Well, at least I know Zaya won't be one of those, so maybe I could do this. And then it says once per turn when blind when blind jumping, gain plus five movement. Hmm. All right, but now it's back to me. So the market's dead. How can I? I can go mine. But and to sell that one is at Neo Damascus. Um, and, or I can open up the map more. I'm going to use my impulse of two just to move down here and use one energy to scan here with the little circle symbol. And I get red gulch. I can mine for Terra there, but there's nowhere to sell it. I was hoping for some planets so maybe I can do some of this stuff. Mm, expiration token on that. All right, so another energy to scan this other area. I'll be going off the square. And I find another gate. So I do have some interesting opportunities here because I can try to do the Traveler. I use the Tigris Gate and then go to exp and then fly to the Expedia Gate, then fly to Delta's Gate, and then finally. Oh, I guess I could. Have done, it was just those before. Oh, I forgot. I think this was part of the expansion. Uh, they give you another gate, but uh, that could be two fame points. And then I have what was it, Daredevil? I can fly through these right now without using shields, which I don't even have. And it says I survive. And then I no longer roll when using a when going through asteroids. Okay. All right, let's try. Uh, let's, let's start out with trying Daredevil. So, first movement marker. Roll my D8. I don't have my GTS anymore, so it's just whatever I roll. Seven. So I go one, two. So let's see if I get damage. Sixteen. I don't. 
So three movement. Ooh, a 20. Actually gives me a fame. So I'm safe also. Um, so I rolled seven, or was it? I went one, two, three, four, and then five into this one. So I still have two movement if I want. And I rolled an 18, so I'm safe. So I'll be claiming this one during uh, my status phase. I don't even looked at these uh, missions. So much going on in this game. Is a Zer out? I don't think so. Yeah, a lot of these don't have the right places out. Tigris Gate to Outpost 388. That's pretty close. I'll take that shuttle mission. Because someone just wants to go from Tigris Gate to Outpost 388. It's one away. So I'm only in 2,000, but I'm getting a fame point if I do it. Um, let me see what this token is. Expiration token gave me a Terra Cube. So it's a little green guy here. But nowhere to sell it. All right, let me uh, scan. Maybe I'll find a place to sell it. So I'll scan once. And I'll do the one to the right here with the Y. Helmont, a debris field. You can get cyber here or possibly die. And then I can scan again for the left side to get Tafjur, a dead world, which will have uh, three excavation relics for me. that there expiration tokens on both these spots ooh, ooh, ooh. what to how to do this all right let me use a movement so we're going to D8, 5, I'm going to go this S, or yeah, excavate here, actually, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'll go to this area over here, let me just keep on, see, I'm not going to use that stuff, signs of life, I get it, I can move that off the board. Run out of room. I'm going to scan twice. So for the first one, I'll do this area right here. So it's a little arrow. I found Lunari. Oh, where are you? Little arrow there. And I can sell plasma there. And then for the bottom one here. Door of N5, where you can sell cyber. So that's a slip for the circle, like so. Okay, so I still have another movement, so let's just see what I get. Four. Uh, what can I... So I have one cube for each of them, and since the economy board is dead, I can I'll get the little bonus. But I think I'll get one more cyber because if I can sell both cyber, I'll get a victory or a fame point too. So I'll move four spaces towards uh, Pelmont over here, and just go one, two, three, four, and then just get there next time. Uh, let me use my energy scoop try to get some free energy back roll the two so nothing happens didn't work all right so that was a uh, I'm done with action phase 
there's no business phase, so status phase, no framing. I can claim this fame now. So that gives me a point. I'm at 10. And now I don't have to roll when entering asteroids, which is pretty awesome. I don't have to go around everything now. Um, I use three markers, so let me spend those three energy to rearm those. And NP or a system expanse turn. So there's a big old spot here that has the most sides showing with four. Uh, we'll use this little T off this one to find Azur. So now all these plans come out. Merchants can have a field day. Uh, with a little T. Where's the T? Like so. So there you can sell Terra. Okay. Uh, that was expand. So now NPC turn. So again, the scoundrel's not doing anything because I'm level three. The enforcer will be attacking him twice. With a crazy amount of die. So let's see. 16 plus 8, so 24 plus 5, so 29 total. I think he just had like a couple, two damage left. Yeah, and he blocks 10 of it, but. So he kills him again, takes his monies. He gets a fame, which triggers another event, and it is. Trade embargo. Don't be caught with cybernetics. <laughs> While this card is in play, cyber is under a trade embargo. Buying or selling cyber is illegal. And taking either action will earn you a bounty of 1,000 credits. Uh, if I So buy cyber. I can buy cyber. I can get 1,000 and get 4 cubes. But I'll get a thousand bounty credit. If I sell it, I'll get one extra for every four cubes with money as usual, one extra fame point, and I get a thousand bounty. Every time someone buys or sells cyber, place one damage on this card, and this card goes away when there are three damage on this card. Great, because I was just about to go try to get some more cyber. I still might. Uh, well, I guess I can do mine for Terra. That's even closer. Just do all of them. Okay. Um, blah, blah, blah. And then the merchant. So he's still going to Kepler 2 to the cell space. He only has to move one. So let's see what he does. If arrived, he's going to roll a D6. And he's going to get that many thousand credits. So of course he gets 6,000 credits to the roll of six. Uh, I guess I'll put that on him. If at least 5,000 are aboard, he's gonna spend 5,000 to get a fame point for the NPC team. So now they're at 17. All right, and then now they get to roll their D20. They're adding plus four to the roll because of a, a force of killing scoundrel. I rolled a 12, so 16 gets um, two points. So they're at 19. So I get a title revealed and a event. The title, Raider, Prey on the Weak. To claim this title, be the first player to destroy the merchant ship. And then if you do, uh, you get plus two damage on, on NPC ships. And then the event, Socialist merchants helping captains in need. Uh, oh, uh, while this card is in play, so it says, uh, players may not purchase more than one fame, fame point per turn using wealth. At the start of your turn, take a gift and rearm markers if needed. 
so I am definitely five plus behind the leader. So I'm taking a look at the bottom one. I would gain six energy and 2,000 credits. And I'm just getting that every round until uh, when the card doesn't leave play. That would have been a nice way earlier. So now, I mean, uh, there's no way I'm going to get 10 points. So I'm pretty sure they're going to win next round. But, oh, well, I'll gain my six energy from this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll definitely take my 2,000 credits. Oh, you should have been off the board. Okay, uh, I will move. I use my arm markers. Roll my D8 and move five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. I could make it to the salvage spot. I think I will. And now I just go to the mining here and try to mine for some Terra. So I roll my D20. Roll the 12. So that gives me one. Terra cube. Uh, I guess I can keep trying. Why not? 15. Get another Terra cube. 10. <laughs> That's the worst number if you do fail is a 10. And I don't have any shields, so I'm taking all 10 damage. I think I'm done uh, mining Terra, safe to say. So I still have the armor plating, so four of those can take up those spots. And then the rest, I should have spaces on my ship without knocking out any cubes or making my engine weaker. So, <laughs> okay, so yeah, I think I'm uh, done mining. So let me use my engine, see if I can make it to a zero over here to sell it. Uh, so my D8, five total, and I can just fly through asteroids without worry now. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm one space away. So I have to use my other move. I only need one movement, so it didn't really matter what I rolled. Well, I rolled an eight, but I just realized like I might as well get this marker here. Expiration token. I got more movement. I don't need it, but I am going to take those two expiration tokens, turn them in, and get 2,000. Now, before I sell, I'm going to use three energy to use my hard bargaining. I roll a d20. Woo, I rolled a 20, natural 20, so that's another uh, fame point. And I received 3,000 credits per cube I sell. So I'm, I'm selling Terra, which I have three cubes. So that's 3,000 on top of the regular. So just for the regular sell, I'm making 3,000. And then... Since I have three cubes and 3,000 extra each, I'm making 9,000. So let me turn that one in. That's two fives. So that just made me uh, 15,000 right there. Or no, no, not 15, uh, 12,000. That was uh, pretty awesome. So since I sold two or more of the cubes of that type that they wanted, that gives me a fame point. Uh, and these three Terra cubes get converted into hollow. So I take the little bonus 1000 off the hollow one since that's now, there's now some of that on the board. So that was a pretty awesome round. Too bad now since the socialist merchants came up 
I can only buy one fame per round because I could have bought three fame. But I'll still buy one for sure. Um, so I'm going to use my impulse just to get... Oh man, hollow. Where would I sell it? Oh, Kepler 2. Yeah, so I'll just move two spaces with my impulse. And I'll buy. No, I can't. Yeah, I can buy a three hollow. So it's a thousand for each two hollow. So I'm kind of losing a thousand. Well, no, okay. So yeah, I'll just spend a thousand. And buy a two hollow. Pop those on my board. And I'll stop there and go into my business phase. So since I'm on a planet, everything gets recharged. To repair my level three ship, it cost me two thousand. To take all this off. I'm gonna buy fame, so I'm gonna spend I can only do it once because of this uh event for five thousand, so that'll pop me up at thirteen. And then I can use the rest of my money just to buy some outfits. So like for a thousand I can get a cargo pod. That way all these can sit in there a lot easier. Let's see, I can... I can sell this one for a thousand and then plus two thousand. I'll take the level three engine which lets me roll a d12. And let's see, another thousand, get a GTS. For 2,000, get two more GTSs, because you can have multiple of these. As long and they work only if they're adjacent to the engine. So now I'm moving at least seven. And I'm only doing all this in case I roll a one, two, or three for the NPCs. Because then they'll get zero points. But uh we'll we'll just see. Uh so what I have three thousand left over. Anything else I want? No. How about just uh can I fit three armor platings on here? So let me see if thousand thousand if I gotta play around with this. Well, that's been two thousand. I can take four, 12 damage before it starts getting on the ship. I mean, it's kind of on the ship, but I don't need any shields. Uh, that's it for my business phase. So, status. I didn't claim anything. Everything's already refreshed. All right, so that's it for me. Uh, system expanse we'll just pick this spot here with the little line and we get the chasm where so I'll go there another little outlaw planet I think it's one expiration token Okay, um, NPC turn. Let's see where Scoundrel pops up. If there's a 10 on the board, reveal yourself. See 11, 10 over here. 
And you're just going to sit there and let the enforcer blow them up. Because now it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Enforcer is already in range. Use all the die for the enforcer. Eight, eight plus fifteen. So on the two d8s, he rolled two eights, and then he rolled a fifteen and a seventeen. So even if he rolled perfect rolls on the two d8s, like he's just guaranteed dead. So scoundrel dies. They get their final point, and that'll be the end. They got 20 points. I got 13. So I had a super slow start. I mean, I had an awesome time because I always love exploring this board. It's been a while since I played. So game slowed down a little bit just because I have to look some stuff up. But I just love exploring the board, seeing what pops out, uh, things that are presented to me. I should have gone for expiration tokens early on just to get some more money and the little bonuses you get off of them but i got a little bit greedy. this this really hurt i got a little greedy with these uh relics because i load up on two of them and i try to get that third one and then it ends up killing me i mean i could have just had those two kind of curious what they are because uh should have just been these last two. So one is a fame point or 2,000 credits in a GTS. And then the other one's a fame point or just 3,000 credits. So yeah, that would have been really helped me out to get to that level three faster. But it didn't work out, but I still had a good time. Well, that's it for me. Thank you for joining me, everyone out there. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Hopefully, I, I didn't do too many rules mistakes. I know I did a couple little rewinds because I forgot I had a new power or maybe one or two other things. Uh, but overall, it still wasn't enough. Um, yeah, that's all. Uh, don't really have much to say except I love this game. It's probably one of my top three games. And you guys have a good one out there.